The Zimmerman Industries Volumetric Mixer is designed to be a user-friendly machine with simple mechanisms and controls that are quickly and easily set and adjusted. The operation can be broken down into 10 steps, which we will demonstrate. Step 1. The first step that the operator will need to do is ensure that the daily and weekly maintenance items have been done. A placard above the operator's panel shows the location of each component to be serviced, the recommended interval, the type of action required, and the number of places to be addressed. Step 2. The next step is to ensure that each of the material bins and tanks are filled. There are separate bins for the dry materials, cement, sand, stone. Each of these is loaded from the top, and care must be taken to keep the materials separate. If your unit has optional bins for other dry materials, each of these will need to be loaded as well, with the same care taken to keep the materials separate. There are also holding tanks for each liquid material. The water tank is loaded from a top-mounted fill port and can also be configured with a ground-level fill point. If the unit is equipped with admixture delivery systems, each of these will have a holding tank. Zimmerman Industries utilizes a pressurized delivery system for liquid admixtures and all air pressure must be released prior to loading. To release any stored pressure, the following steps must be taken. Each admixture system has a ball valve that allows pressurized air to flow to the tank. This is located on the driver's side of the unit, on a panel left of the gate setting levers. Turn this to the closed position. On units built prior to 2009, the ball valve allowing airflow is located on the top of the tank. Each tank has a ball valve that releases the pressure from the tank and is located on the top of the tank. Turn this to the open position. This will vent the tank to the atmosphere. Once all the pressure has been released, the tank may now be filled through the gate valve on the top of the tank. Remove the plug and open the gate valve completely. There is a sight tube on the side of the tank showing the level of liquid. Once the tank is filled, close the gate valve completely and replace the plug. If your unit has additional options using liquids, consult your owner's manual for loading instructions. Step 3. Upon arrival at the job site, position the unit to efficiently make the delivery. Step 4. Determine the mix that you will be delivering. Step 5. Set the unit to the settings needed to meet the job requirements. The settings will be based upon the calibration of each of the ingredients and will be specific to a particular mix design. Engage the power takeoff to start the hydraulic system. Ensure that the pneumatic system is turned on. This is done by turning the air feed ball valve from the truck to the open position. Adjust the sand and stone gates to the required levels. Turn the water delivery ball valve to the open position and engage the water pump. Ensure that the water pressure gauge at the top of the water pump shows pressure. If this gauge does not indicate any pressure, Disengage the water pump and consult your owner's manual before continuing. For each admixture required, you will need to charge the holding tank. Turn the air pressure release ball valve, located on the top of the tank, to the closed position. At the admixture control panel, located left of the gate setting levers, turn the corresponding ball valve to the open position. This will pressurize the tank and all lines that are in that circuit. Check that the cement clutch is engaged. If the unit has optional equipment, ensure that each of these is engaged, as described in the owner's manual. At the operator's panel, engage the throttle advance switch. This will take the engine to the required operating speed for the hydraulic system. Activate the vibrator system by turning the vibrator rocker switch to the on position. Ensure that the water delivery ball valve, located below the water flow meter, is in the open position. Step 6. Position the mix auger and any chutes to be used. Remove the auger safety chain before attempting to lower the auger. Failure to do so will result in damage to the mechanism. Ensure that the area below the auger is clear. Release the auger latch by pressing the air valve located on the operator's panel. 
While holding the latch open, lower the auger to the mixing level. The auger is designed to work most efficiently at an angle of 20 degrees. At this position, the auger can swing throughout the full range of motion. There is a level indicator on the side of the frame for a reference. Once the auger is positioned, use the washout hose to pre-wet the inside of the auger, the outside of the auger frame and boot, and any chutes to be used. This will aid in the washout at the end of the job. Since Zimmerman Industries offers several chute options, consult your owner's manual for specific instructions to meet your configuration. Step 7. Preset the water flow meter, any admixture flow meter to be used, and any optional delivery systems. With the unit at operating speed, use the rocker switch labeled water to start the flow of water. Using the water control valve located above the water flow meter, set the water flow meter to the desired delivery amount and turn the water rocker switch off to stop the flow of water. This water can be run into the mixing auger or the delivery hose may be removed from the auger and run onto the ground. If run into the mix auger, be sure to empty prior to beginning production. The admixture flow meter is set by turning the corresponding rocker switch to the on position. This will arm the electric solenoid for the selected system. Once the system is armed, it will activate any time that the material feed wand switch is engaged. The water rocker switch is connected to the material feed wand switch and either can be used to activate the admixture solenoid. To minimize the waste of material, turn the water delivery ball valve to the closed position. This will allow the admixture to flow while stopping the discharge of water. Activate the admixture solenoid and use the corresponding admixture ball valve located to the right of the water flow meter to set the flow meter to the desired amount. Once it is set, deactivate the solenoid by turning off the triggering switch. Turn the water delivery ball valve back to the open position so that water flow will not be stopped. If the unit is equipped with other options, consult the owner's manual for instructions on settings. Step 8. Set all counters to zero. If so equipped, ensure that any ticket printing devices are set. Begin production by engaging the mix auger valve fully and ensure that any liquids remaining in the mechanism are completely discharged. The mix auger must be engaged first. Failure to do so may result in spillage of material and damage to the mechanisms. Engage the material feed valve. This will begin delivery of all materials that are engaged into the mix auger. During production, monitor all flow meters and other settings to ensure consistent delivery. Step 9. Production may be stopped and started as desired. To stop production, first disengage the material feed valve. This will stop all materials from entering the mix auger. Allow the mix auger to completely empty and then disengage the mix auger. Once the delivery is completed, determine the amount of the delivery from the settings chart. If equipped with a ticket system, print the ticket. Turn all rocker switches to the off position. Release air pressure from the admixture tanks. Step 10. The final step of the operation of a Zim mixer is cleaning the mechanisms. The auger and chutes must be washed out completely to ensure consistent delivery and production. For more information regarding operation of a Zimmerman Industries volumetric mixer, contact us at www.zimmermanindustries.com.